Hello class, we're about to start section 3.R3.6, Simplifying Radical Expressions. It says objective number one, the square roots of positive numbers. We know that some numbers can look different but have the same value, such as 1.5 and 3 halves, 4 6 2 thirds, negative, negative 10 over 2 would be negative 5, and 35% we could write it as 35 or over 100, or it could be 7 over 20. Okay, this is also true of square roots. For example, find the following on your calculator. The square root of 45 and 3 times the square root of 5. If you type this in on your calculator, it will give you the same exact value. Now the calculator that's provided on this computer, I don't believe, oh, we actually do have a square root P. So we could do the square root of 45, which would be, where is the square root P here? Okay, I could do it like this, 2 square root 45. So that would give up, no, that's not. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. So this doesn't have the square, the traditional square root key, but it's the same as taking this to the one half power. So I just take 45 to the one half power, and that will give you six point. You see this seven zero eight and all of this. So then now we would take three times, and then because I don't have the proper keys on this calculator, I'll put this as an exponent. It would be 5 to the 0.5 power. It's not an over and it will give you 6 point. It will give you the same exact thing. So they are the same exact value. So, and then the square root of 3 eighths and the square root of 6 over 4, they are not the same. That is because this... The square root of 3 eighths is the same as square root of 3 over square root of 8. This right here is just the square root of 6 over 4. So these will not produce the same answer. So now, we want to do the simplest form of a square root. But before we get into that, let's take care of these squares here. 1 squared is 1. 6 squared is 36. 11 squared is 121. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, 14 squared is 196, and 15 squared is 225. Now, I just ran through these because you could easily type these in your calculator, but these are good to have on hand. Now, we want to we want to look at the product property, the square root of A times B. Now, with the product property, it will go like this. The square root of A times B is the same as the square root of A times the square root of B. Now, what we want to do we want to isolate this that we would take out the perfect square out of these uh, square roots. So with the square root of 18, if I wanted an exact answer, not you just put it in the calculator, you would take the factors of 18 and take out the highest perfect square from 18, which would be 9. So we could break this up as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. The square root of 9 is 3, and we'll bring down our square root of 2. So we're saying that the square root of 18 and 3 times the square root of 2 is the same exact value. Now we go here to B, the square root of 20. The highest perfect square in 20 is 4. So we add the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. The square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 5. And that is your final answer. Now, we have the square root of 800. Now, we can factor out 400. The square root of 400 times the square root of 2. 
the square root of 400 is 20. And that will give you 20 times the square root of 2. Now we look here at D with the square root of 2, 252. Yes? Should you be writing plus or minus square root of, or plus or minus 3 times square root of 2? Plus or minus 2 square root of Oh, you only do, okay, just to let you know, you only do plus or minus when there is an equal sign initially in the problem when you're solving an equation. We don't do plus or minus yet. Okay. So the square root of 252, this can be broken up to the square root of 36 times the square root of 7. Now we put our perfect square here. The square root of 36 is 6 times the square root of 7. So now, we scroll here. The quotient property. The quotient property basically goes like this. If the whole quotient is under the square root, I'm going to write it above here so it won't jump like the last problem. That means we could individually take both of these and put these under the square root. So the square root of the square root of a over b is the same thing as the square root of a over the square root of b. Okay, so now we're going to put that to the test with example two. We have the square root of nine over a hundred. We'll do the square root of nine over the square root of 100. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 100 is 10. So it'll be 3 tenths. Now we look here at B. It'll be the negative square root of 7 over the square root of 121. So this will give us a negative square root 7 over 11, because the square root of 121 is 11. Now, we look here at C. We had the square root of 12 over the square root of 25. Now we know the square root of 25 is 5. Now here's the thing. Don't we have a perfect square in 12? <coughs> What's the highest perfect square in 12? It's 4. So it'd be square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Now we know the square root of 4 is 2. So it'd be 2 times the square root of 3 all over 5. Now, we scroll down here to example three. Now, one thing you need to know as far as square roots or radicals are concerned, you cannot have a radical in your denominator of your fraction. If you do, you have to get rid of that uh, radical from your denominator. Now, we have four over the square root of seven. The square root of seven doesn't have any perfect squares in it. So what we would do is we would multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 7. And this is rationalizing our denominator. Square root of 7 times square root of 7 is the square root of 49. And 4 times the square root of 7 is 4 square root 7. So our numerator would still stay 4 square root 7, but the square root of 49 is just 7. Does everyone follow that? Now, when you're dealing with square roots, whenever you multiply a square root by itself, you can just drop the square root and it'll be that number. Does everyone follow that? Okay, now, this will become the square root of 2 over the square root of 5. Now, 5 doesn't have any perfect square roots in it, so we will multiply the square root of 5 by the numerator and denominator. So this would give us the square root of 10 over 5. Because we know square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 25. Now we come here to see. This would be a negative square root of 7 over the square root of 12. Now we know the square root of 12 has a perfect square in it. The square root of 12 can be broken down to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Now the square root of 4 we know is 2 times the square root of 3. Now we know we cannot have the square root of 3 in our denominator. So we will multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. So our numerator would be the square root of 21. Our denominator would be 2 times 3. Because we know square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. And this is multiplied. So now... We will have the square root of 21 all over 6. 
Well, actually, it should be a negative because this was negative. So it should be a negative square root of 21 over 6. Does everyone follow that? Okay, now, are there any questions here? Any questions so far? Okay, now we come here to D. We will add the square root of 9 over the square root of 32. First of all, the square root of 9 is just 3. Square root of 32 does have a perfect square in it at 16. So we will add 3 over 4 square root 2. We know we cannot have the square root of 2 in our denominator. So we will multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. So our numerator would be 3 square root 2. Our denominator would be 4 times 2. So our final answer would be 3 square root 2 all over 8. Now we go here to objective 2. Square roots of negative numbers. Now before, when you all learn how to do square roots, whenever you had a negative number under your radical, it will automatically be no solution or cannot be solved or something like that. But because we're dealing now with what is called complex numbers, we can do the square root of a negative. Now one thing I want to show you is this here. I'm going to show it up here. The square root of a negative 1 is i. The square root of negative 1 is i. Now you can take your TI-84 calculator, press mode, press mode on your TI-84 calculator, or TI-83, either one is fine. If you press mode, you should see somewhere in mode where it says real, and it has a plus bi. Do you all see that A plus BI? Go and highlight A plus BI and press enter. Now press clear in your calculator and then type in the square root of negative 1. Type in the square root of negative 1 and it should give you I. Does everyone follow that? Now one thing I would say is this here. If you're ever taking a test like a standardized test, because you, uh, just to let you all know, you can still take the ACT and get scholarship money for it, even though you're out of high school. So if you decide to take the ACT over again, you should set your calculator to A plus BI mode. That will answer all of the questions, so you won't have to switch later. So the square root of negative 25 will give us 5I. So now, this I is called an imaginary unit because we're working in a complex number system. So it is an imaginary number. Now, if you want a quick uh, history of it, quick little brief history, you got this note here. You can read it at your leisure. Now, let's go down here to A. We have square root of negative 150. Now, listen, before we pull out any perfect squares, we always pull the i out first. So square root of negative 150, we'll pull out our i first. So it'll be i times a positive 150. Now, the greatest uh, square in 150 is 25. So we have i times the square root of 25 times the square root of 6. The square root of 25 is 5. So it'll be i times 5 square root of 6. And our final answer would be 5i times the square root of 6. That would be our final answer here. Now we look here at B. Remember, we pull out the i first. So it would be negative i times the square root of 144. What's the square root of 144? 12. So it would be negative i times 12, which would be a negative 12i. Now we come down here to C. We have this, this negative here, so we have negative i, and then we have this multiplied by the square root of 7 over the square root of 20. We can just go ahead and do that. So now, we will have negative i times the square root of 7. The square root of 20 can be broken up to square root of 4 times the square root of 5. 